it, it's my pleasure to welcome everyone at the Ambassador's opportunities for American businesses to come in. And we're very proud and, and happy that uh, this year, for the first time in Ukraine's history, we participate in the World Innovation Conference and Expo, and even taken the rightful so the uh, Russian, former Russian pavilion, which gives us even more joy. Uh, so Ukra Ukrainian scientists uh, have this great opportunity to present their inventions, their R&D in many uh, fields such as uh, wastewater management, environmental protection, uh, welding, cybersecurity, and so on and so forth, and establish business contacts with the leading global uh, companies uh, that also took part in this, um, this event. And uh, among the sectors uh, that I would like to highlight that that's particularly promising in Ukraine is the IT industry. Uh, we see about 20-25% growth in the Ukrainian IT sector for the past five years. Ukraine is among top five among IT outsourcing destinations. And, and the uh, annual um, market for IT services is about, is about $300 billion dollars a year. So uh, we're glad that our um, companies, our representatives could present uh, the potential that Ukraine has. And, and uh, show that we are ready to do business with the uh, American and other businesses. We are uh, ready to um, work with investors. And uh, we, of course, are happy to have this opportunity to do another presentation here tonight at uh, our embassy and have a chance to welcome everyone to once again showcase the uh, potential of uh, Ukraine's modern economy. And uh, I would like to thank the uh, yes, Ukraine Foundation, and Pani Nadia Makwano. I don't know where she takes all the energy to do all these events. I, mean, I wish I had this much energy. Uh, uh, and uh, also, I would like to thank the uh, uh, Ukraine Research and Development Enterprise for being a co-organizer of this event. So once again, thank you and welcome. I mentioned that we're going to be doing a series of events for Ukraine in Washington, 2015. and. Uh, I'm, it is my pleasure to present the first Ukrainian Washington event of 2015, and that was the fact that we had the privilege to work with Joseph and Dina Briefman of the Ukraine Research and Development Enterprise in their organization of this Ukraine Pavilion at Tech Connect conference. And as I as already was mentioned, what was once the Russian Pavilion is now uh, Ukraine's Pavilion, and this is where the chance for uh, Ukraine's top scientists and, and Joseph will introduce the two that we have here today to present, uh, like I said, 27 projects that are cutting edge technology. And Derek already, I think, explained really the significance of uh, what's happened with Ukraine's uh, participation. Uh, so without any further ado, I will uh, ask Joseph Griffin sure. Thank you very to much. Uh, begin the, his presentation and introduce our I will yes. try to have a chance to use my voice instead of microphone because you will be deaf uh, if I will use both, voice, my voice and microphone, so I will keep it kind of on a low level. And also I will ask my colleagues to introduce themselves, uh, that will be more articulate and uh, how about you will say something about yourself. Okay. <laughs> Go Right now? Yeah. Maybe after you? No, no, just 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 to introduce yourself. Please. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Vladimir Nesterenko. I am chief of electron beam welding department in Patron Welding Institute. Our department consists of about 47 members. It's all together scientists, engineers, and technic technicians. Uh, start. Uh, we have about uh, 2,500 square meters facilities and uh, our main activity is developing technology and equipment for electron beam welding, any kinds of materials and uh, for any 
uh, kinds of application. First of all, it's uh, uh, we developed technology for uh, achieve good quality products in airspace industries, uh, industry, uh, in uh, power engineering industry, in chemical industry, and uh, uh, and uh, aircraft uh, for manufacturing component of aircraft. aircraft. First of all, engine, uh, fuselage, and wings uh, company. Uh, luckily, we have had good uh, uh, relationship with uh, some foreign company. Uh, for instance, Japan uh, bought about 25 sets equipment, uh, full sets uh, equipment for electron beam welding. It's our design in our manufacture. Luckily, uh, uh, recently we have had good relationship with some uh, uh, United States uh, companies, enterprises, very famous enterprises. And uh, believe me, it's provide very uh, good uh, opportunities for us to increase our knowledge, knowledge is about about uh, some uh, some kinds of uh, equipment which necessary for uh, industry so high level industry like United States. It means we increase our knowledge knowledges and uh, try to uh, manufacture to design to uh, manufacture equipment which adequate to requirement of United States industry. It's very very important for us. And uh, what should I, uh, what should I say? say uh, right now, it's very important for us to take participation in such event like this one. Because, yes, it's very terrible situation right now around uh, Ukraine. But we believe in our future. And our future uh, very depend from uh, uh, conversation with famous scientists in the world, like today and yesterday, we have done it. And uh, uh, I should say uh, thank you very much for Joseph, because just his tremendous forces, he spent too much forces and be here, and we are here. That's why, and thank you very much, Nadia, to you, say. A minor supporting Thank role. you. <laughs> Hi. Vladimir. There's two Vladimirs. Can you imagine? You call on one and another one is answering. You are with you. Yeah. And both are doctors of science and professors and academicians. And you feel like more than one of them around you, you feel kind of like you're too small. <laughs> not, not as important. But that's OK. They don't know that. So they think they're just regular guys. But I disagree. But that's OK. Some words, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm very glad to introduce some achievements of the Institute of Cybernetics uh, and at first uh, many thanks to uh, all who support uh, this uh, introduction of our achievements in uh, Ukrainian Embassy in Washington and first you, Mr. Joseph and uh, all staff of uh, Embassy and uh, maybe some uh, forgot to, to mention somebody but uh, all who support this visit to United States, I'm, 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 I'm many, many cents from me.
Institute of Cybernetics uh, is a very famous institute in the former Soviet Union, and if the first computer in the United States was uh, manufactured in 1948 by Eckert, the first European computer, continental Europe, uh, was designed in our institute in 1951. It was MESMO, a computer by uh, academician Lebedev. And uh, at the same time, with this, this, this year, maybe months to months, uh, it was uh, designed such computer in uh, Great Britain by, by Professor Turing. And uh, uh, from that time, from small laboratory, our institute uh, was, uh, be became a very large center of information technologies, computer science, and, and so on. And uh, maybe, uh, 30 years ago, 70% of our computers were designed and manufactured by our institute designing. And this time, of course, our industry, something dropped, and all our projects uh, have no support of industry. We have hardware, software in medicine, in computer technique, information technology, uh, and uh, in special mathemat mathematical methods. And, uh, but we have no support uh, industry in our country, and we want to find uh, partners in the United States and in other uh, modern uh, developing countries. Uh, for example, we have many mathematicians new methods, uh, and uh, due to these methods we have possibility to uh, solve the task in not so uh, high-speed computers that you have in the United States, and, uh, uh, but uh, these methods uh, are very important to imply in your computers too. We have many computer devices for medicine, agriculture, environment protection, and uh, another sphere of uh, our activity, and uh, they are ready for to manufacturing, in, not only in our industry, because we have no other industry, but in your uh, enterprises too. And we uh, hope that this first visit is uh, maybe begin the, uh, the first step to uh, moving our products to uh, United States market. And uh, if you support us, I think uh, it will, will be useful for Ukraine and for you too. And uh, if we cooperate our uh, forces for uh, <laughs> creating new products in information technology. If you, there are many, the list of our achievements, but if you have questions, we have possibility to answer uh, because we lost time due to a delay and heavy traffic, and sorry for this delay, but uh, maybe we, we will be many active in our answers, and so to compensate this uh, losses of time for our delay. Thank you and uh, very much for your attention, and if you have answers, uh, ask uh, questions, I am uh, ready to give your full answers to uh, detailed information about our institute, about information technology in Ukraine, and about uh, other spheres of our activity. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I, I will start from, uh, let me put it this way. Um, it was a major idea, talking about this conference, this forum. A major idea was to address a most um, unsolved problem for the last 25 years. And the problem was and is that everybody knows Russia. Russia is space program, Russia is that type of industry, another type of industry, and you can, whatever people know about the Soviet Union, they associated that with Russia. That's where it came from. In reality, Ukraine in, in no way, in the mind of scientific and high-tech community, associated with any type of science, with the exception of few people. That's why it doesn't matter what kind of a projects you offer them, 
in reality, they politely, like all of us Americans, will say it's great, but, and you do not move any farther. It's about it. Because Ukraine does not have a name. Name as an equal partner, name as a potential partner in high tech and science. I'm working with Mr. Paton Boris Evgenich. If you don't know who that is, it's a president of Academy of Science in the last 50 something years, and 96 years old now, an iron fist on Academy of Science. He is the only guy who can tell me, you have to do this, and I will. He's out too much of it. He never was my boss, but he kept me alive, literally. 20 something years ago when I started this pro program and had that idea as I had two companies, Russia Research and Development and Ukraine Research and Development. And I'm saying start, I got canceled. And I was told I have three months. That was it. Living my wife. And, and, and this world, I was saved by special situation by Tibetan doctor. Not in a topic of this discussion. But what kept me moving is my calls to Boris Evgenich, to Paton, and know what his age, and know what he went through, and all of this optimism, all of this energy. And I'm a guy with a lot of energy in, in me, but that helped me. That, that, that just was great. It was some other friends, like director of Institute of Cybernetic, uh, Mikhailevich, academic Mikhailevich, when we together start putting it all, uh, this project, and after that, this unpredictable situation interrupt the process, uh, trying to be alive in, in simplicity. So finishing with this and coming back to the issue of name recognition. As many projects I was offering, even through my personal connection, you know, you have personal connection, people will listen to you at least, you have some some level of authority to those guys. It was like a concrete wall. It's come to decision that, are you kidding me? Ukraine, who, who, what? What they can offer? I mean, give me a break. Can you bring something from Russia? Or something of that time. I came to point uh, six years ago, we never been back to Soviet Union. We left 79, and I will interrupt myself with the topics. Uh, just a little bit about me. Uh, um, I was uh, head of a uh, very unusual company in the Soviet Union. And uh, it was uh, unusual by function, by, by idea. Uh, usually in Soviet Union, every company had what you're supposed to do, for whom you're supposed to do, for how much you're supposed to I mean, it's all God's plan. It's planning uh, uh, organization for the entire Soviet Union and everybody's supposed to work under them. It was only one entity would never work that way, and it was Mr. Korolev, Academician Korolev, who did Russian space program. All of that was under his management. He was a decision maker and head of central committee. That's all. He was reporting only to that person. Now, I decided that I'm crazy enough, and I will put together a company, special first department, who will have same rights in Soviet Union. So, I will decide whom to work with, I will decide what technology to do, and who will be my clients. That was totally insane. Well, but at that time, Soviet Union was uh, in a deep trouble with the high tech, in a deep trouble with even using their own science, okay? So first I put together a pretty large high, uh, scientific, more like high tech, uh, department and work Russian space program, uh, army, heavy industry, aircrafts, it's all kind of a classified technology and it was quite successful. It was a project, uh, Russian supersonic passenger uh, uh, airplane, much before England and France. And we were the first a group of young students just finished our uh, Kiev Polytechnic Institute and after 10 years of all institutes tried to make system of testing at the ground that particular uh, airplane and did not succeed. We copy American technology in six months. We, we had a test 
of 1.2 million sensors. Imitation of flying giant. Well, I'm telling you all that, that you would understand where I, came, where I came from. My last company before I left Soviet Union in 1979, we left, was a, a company that had that unusual function. We were digging into major scientific and high-tech institutes of Soviet Union all across the country. We were allowed to go to uh, storages of thousands of projects that was developed and designed completely and never used. Nine out of every ten projects in the Soviet Union, billions of dollars or rubles, whatever, never was used. Never were implemented. As a matter of fact, it's the same situation today. Nothing changed. 35 years, nothing. We had a right to go into open door, analyze the projects, go back to Army, go back to space people, go back to high technology and say, I have a project, I will help you to implement it. And they look at us, but this has it, where in the world you find it? Oh, it was in storage of this and this and this institute. You're kidding me. We're looking for it 10 years. We never, we had no idea it's there. Okay. So my first big department was in the Ministry of, 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 of Electronics. It was a different name. I will simplify it. And the last one was in the Ministry of Automobile Industry of Soviet Union. There was three million people working for it. And the guy who was head of minister was a guy who spent all his life in Italy and went from simple engineer to senior vice president of Fiat. And after that, Soviet decided to bring Fiat to, to a different name, come, uh, car, to Soviet Union. And, and uh, that guy was called to be general director of super gigantic automobile company. And after that, they offered him to be minister. And he called on me and said, OK, you're crazy. I know you're doing all of this absolutely crazy things. How about you will come to work for me? And told me to organize national company to do the exactly the same what I did in other ministry. And I said, one condition, I will continue to work for space, even though you're out of building, but they will continue to work for all kind of a high technology. In this case, I will help you. My major help was very simple. When a big plant was built for about 600,000 cars in three months, all major uh, machines stopped. You know what, what was the reason for it? All electronics was stolen, all of it. The machines were um, uh, was naked, so nobody could turn it on. So he called on me and said, can you let those machines work? And the, the plant was staying. It's 50,000 workers. Of course, no, no cars coming. So, so uh, I brought together my young friends, and I said, can we? I said, oh, sure. <laughs> I was 25, 26 years old, boys. Just finished Russian, Kiev <laughs> Polytechnic. Anyway, make story short, we make it work. In three months, everything, everything was clicking, and cars started coming from conveyor. Well, that gave us level of authority sorry, and, and, and respect. So that's preamble. This, this is where it all came from. I, I need to tell you something, but you will not see as a complimentary to myself. I absolutely was a big believer in communism. I'm one of those stubborn guys. I, I, I was brainwashed completely by myself. That's what I do to myself. I believe in, in my, my personality, I have black and I have white. And I absolutely don't understand gray. And I mean, if you cannot bring me to politics because I will be some big failure like you will not believe. I just don't understand. Anyway, uh, so uh, the story coming to the point that I remember, not because they did not try, but because they said you need to have 10 workers to become Communist Party member to have one engineer whom we will let to be Communist Party member. I didn't have workers. I had engineers. I have scientists. I, I had a company of 600 people built in six months for that minister. So, but I, it was okay. And until it's happened, what's happened to me, 
I was a believer. I didn't like people to live for Israel or for America. Or for I just thought it's our country. I was patriot and all of that stuff. And eventually, they called me in central committee and said, okay, we will put you in, in this company as a chief engineer, but we cannot give you a position of head of the company because you are Jewish, just openly, and you are not a member of the Communist Party. I said, I agree, but I'm resigning. So they said, they saw, they gave me a position, and after that, I came, and I'm spending your time for that. You need to understand where it's coming from. They called me to Central Committee for final decision, and the instructor of Central Committee was a god at that time. It was just much about everybody. And he started talking in such a way as though what I remember that I was caught rushing around, around the huge office trying to throw him through the window. <laughs> and security jumped on me and forced me to stop and move me out of that room. He did not file complaints. I became a head of the company. And I came home and we had I had everything. I had personal driver. My wife had personal driver. We had Dutchess everywhere, and we never been there because I always was busy. And I said, "We are leaving. Prepare." She said, "Where? Crimea? Uh, which place are we going?" I said, "No, we are leaving this country." And my wife fainted. <laughs> so that's the history. We forged documents with the help of some KGB guys who was deliberately put in the position of my deputies. I knew who they are. And they tried to help me to leave Soviet Union. So we left. We easy could be killed if, we would, if they could catch us. But we were fortunate. So we came to Austria and ran to policemen. And we didn't have no money, no clothes, no nothing. It was just me, my, mo my, my mom, my daughter, and my wife. That's it, and two pillows. That was it. And we start our new life. Now coming to what you came for here. <laughs> I, okay. Now, a high tech of Ukraine. It's a, one of the biggest secrets what exists today in scientific community. It's a secret even for people who live in Ukraine. Even, it's a secret even for people who are scientists in scientific community of Ukraine. It's so strange. The point is that if you look at all major projects, what Soviet Union did in the space program, in cybernetics, and computer design, in software, in all major technologies related to very high, high tech, more than half of it was done in Ukraine, not Russia, not rest of republics, Ukraine. It never was known by anybody. The truth of the matter is nobody was even trying to analyze it and say, hold it, guys. <laughs> it's all our design. It's our projects. What is the matter with you? I was digging everywhere. Institute Cybernetic, Institute Pato, everywhere. I knew what kind of projects they have. Hundreds of the highest level. You know, they have tons of projects today what is still actually ahead of everybody else. And <laughs> they're not used. It's just not used. It's crazy. You see, the whole point about Ukraine today, you see, in America, me and my wife became financial managers for the last over 30 years. I never liked it, but pay your bills. So we, we did the job. You see, we, 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 it, it needs to be understood that if you touch the gigantic accumulation of high-tech scientific projects, you start understanding as a financial manager, analyzing potential of it. We're not talking about hundreds of millions, that's pennies. We are talking billions, tens of billions, instantly available because projects are ready and can be implemented or partly implemented. And nobody does it. Not government, not private institution in a big scale. So when I understood that, I saw when Soviet Union fall apart, I said, my God, 
they didn't have use of those projects when it was one country. Now they will have nothing. I mean, nobody will use that. And I was right. See, I was in a strange situation because somehow Mr. Yeltsin find about me and his chief of staff was driving my wife crazy, calling every second night and saying, Mr. Yeltsin would like to, you to come to Moscow. And, I, and my wife said, over my dead body you will go to that place. <laughs> And it was about oh, conversation over, because I'm not arguing with her. It just make no sense. Uh, so we start building this company, believe it or not, over 20 years ago. And each time I come to with a big project, it's like this concrete wall. No name of Ukraine. No recognition of what Ukraine is all about. Not a complete misunderstanding of potential because Americans have tendency to measure potential in certain industry looking at your economic and political stability. Nothing wrong with it, but in this particular instance, Ukrainian science had accumulation of projects and continuation of building projects despite economic catastrophe and political. That's miracle. It never happened anywhere. It should not happen, but it's what it is. It just exists. Unfortunately, my absolute belief, and I'm not kind of believer, what I'm saying to you is deep analysis, clear understanding of reasons and logic, we may have two, three years before complete collapse of Ukrainian science. We're just there. Because you see, these two people and the rest of those guys, thousands of them, work for nothing. They have no salary. Their salary cannot pay for their food for one week. These two are entrepreneurs. They're not only big scientists, they are capable to commercialize their projects. 99 or 98 out of every 100 not capable to do it. Not at all. They continue to do scientific jobs. They used to receive salary. Their salary shrink and shrink and shrink. Now it's pay for, can pay for nothing. How long they will do that? Another year? Another two? And it will be over. And this gigantic power of about 30 major institutes, with about 30,000 PhDs and doctors of science and academicians will disappear. It's a tragedy, not for Ukraine only. It's a world community tragedy. It should not happen. And I understood I have no another way, because whoever I talk, they said, show me result. Show us what this Ukraine, what you're talking about, all about. Well, I was, I start talking to directors of institute. I have now exclusive representation of a number of major institutes, including, including Paton, which just recently signed with cybernetics, another number of major Ukrainian institutes. But they sign contracts, they would like me to be representative, but that's it. That's it. They just don't have commercial way of doing the job. So I need to do it myself. And I said, look, the only way I can do it, if some of you know Russian literature, Russian history, or Ukrainian, whatever, Soviet, in Russian language, Peter the Great was talking about a window to Europe, to open the window to Europe. I'm, oh, I'm trying to, to, to achieve the door to the United States. <laughs> and once and forever make people understand the potential and capacity of Ukrainian science and high tech. You cannot do it project by project. It's absolutely impossible. You need to have something so big, so uh, logical, and so bright, and I said, okay, I will bring a whole group of projects, sort. TechConnect is the biggest successful uh, uh, organization bringing together thousands of high-tech companies. But I doubtful they ever saw, on the first try, 27 major projects, each of them, on a cutting edge. Each of them. You know, but 
something happened that even my energy and my optimism was almost killed. I, I, I am so mad. You cannot even imagine. It's primarily on the Ukrainian government. I talked to everybody. I was saying, look, my company does everything. We do marketing. We do organization. We work with a clientele. It costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Immeasurable time. Many, many years. Please, you need about 35, 40,000, maybe 50,000 to bring 27, 30 major projects, 27, 30 major scientists and show at once, look at it, look how big it is, look how great it is. You know what they did? They did not give out one penny. I talked to Deputy of, Prime, of Minister of Finance. I, all the stock, all, it just, okay, but, so I did something crazy. I did not talk to my partners, I did not ask my board of directors, I just took a few dollars and paid for all of these 27 projects of that forum. And never was done before, I'm stupid, I shouldn't do that. I still will have a conversation, I know what's waiting for me. <laughs> okay. But I didn't have another way, I paid for all of them, for participation in this particular, as a matter of fact, half of it from our own family budget. And she allowed me, and, and that was just uh, way too far. Well, now we, we were needed them to have tickets and hotel. And I talked to all these oligarchs. You know how much they gave it for? Nothing. Nothing. Everybody were too busy. Why I'm telling you that? Because I would like you to understand. Unless we will be together, every oligarch, every politician, everyone around here in the Ukrainian community who support Ukraine need to understand the way how we do it. This is first step. You have a break in, in those steps, you start everything from the beginning, from zero. You cannot have breaks. It's minus 10, it's not even zero. People start believing in us. Next show like this is in December in the state of Texas, in the capital Austin. 5,000, whatever number of companies, high tech coming. Now our name is known. Now we had flow, they almost killed me. And these guys talking because I supposed to have 27 scientists on 27 projects when every group was about seven, 10 scientists to design that project. I agreed to bring 11 and I brought only two. Can you imagine present 27 major projects, three of us? And our ladies helping us, whatever they could do, even assembly a poster stands. This cannot be like that. But projects, it was amazing success. It was NASA today coming through their leading people. It was a major companies, corporations interviewing us. And Derek, he is a dear friend of Ukraine scientists and, and high tech, and I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you very much. His bosses, two, two crazy techni technical geniuses, decided to, to put together this company. And I was asking all the time, Derek, let me talk to them personally. He brought them together, both, to my boost, and we talked today, and I believe we have first step toward a real partnership. This is the people the most connected in the high tech and science community you can find. And we will work much more than just conferences or meetings, but we have to deliver from us, from us. The next forum need to be smashing success. The, the projects today, we have, we have about 100 companies what is interested to work. Today I was interviewed by two major international corporations. We have technology what definitely unquestionable will change environmental situation in this world. Literally, completely change. Nobody even heard about this technology. We have it. And we are bringing it to the table. We have things what Google and Apple dream about. You know, you, when you have a telephone like this, right? You see, you see the screen? This is a major headache for Google, Apple, and everybody else. Major headache. Scratchable soft, not long-lived, 
and all of that cost a lot. Well, Ukrainian technology allow us to grow monocrystal of sapphire in a form of screen without mechanical job, just click it in. It grows that way. And people today, Americans from the same industry, they came and they read it. it but it's not possible. I said, yeah, really? <laughs> well, we have plant, unfortunately, in China already, and Coursera already ordered two millions of them. And Chinese, four million, and we have 10 million and 10 million job orders. So I don't know about possible or not, and you pay $14.60, and our cost $8.70, and it's up fire. And it can be any electronics. Look, we brought something they cannot believe. He brought the technology when he can, he can weld by, by electronic beam 200 millimeters of aluminum that is stronger than metal itself or different metals. I don't know this. The guys came who already ordered machine from him yesterday and signed contract again. And it's one of the major aerospace companies. Don't you think Ukraine has potential? My God, look, nobody in a normal mind will invest money today in a factory or building something in Ukraine. I'm sorry, nobody will do it. It's impossible for, 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 for businessmen. But if you offer them ready to go projects, ready to go projects, you don't need even question if it's working because it's working, it's already in industrially working or, or one step from it, there's no financial risk. It's a pure profit. It's a pure profit. You know how much cost today in America project what he designed? It's about 60, 70 million dollars. 10, 7, 10 years of work. And we have it ready. And we have this ready. And with that wastewater management, so called, what can double gold production in America? And some working technology. And you name it, and we go on and on and on. And it was a bunch of projects that they, they went through. We really pulled them in because they come and look uh, and pass us by. So I, I catch them because I'm a marketing guy. I know how to do it and teach these scientists a little bit. Share with them, and we brought them, and we brought them, and they start coming, and they start coming. And in the end, when we were coming here, and we start dismantle our pavilion, people couldn't believe we are living. Just, what are you doing? Okay, that's it. I'm gonna torture you too much. Thank you very much. Downstairs, um, I guess with some Venandiki and Holopchi and a few other things. Uh, and Bertzoka. I don't know whether we have <laughs> five minutes for questions. Anybody have a, a question, or or shall we just adjourn to the reception and you can mingle and ask uh, questions? As uh, okay. Well, thank you. You can see um, the power behind this project and. Uh, again, I want to say we are feel privileged to have joined to be uh, a minor supporting role in, in helping uh, bring this. Don't up. say that. Come <laughs> on. See, I was a law, a law, and when I find an idea by recommendation, and I understood first time I have really partners who knows things I have no clue about. It was political and way how to communicate with necessary people, people who can support me. It was like. Oh, oh my God, now I'm not alone. I, I have somebody powerful helping. So stop so, it, mine or okay, okay. Come on. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, again, thank you all for coming. Uh, I think you've got a uh, glimpse of really of the, possi the great possibilities uh, and exciting possibilities that, are, that can really be uh, a great success for Ukraine. So thank you, and let's adjourn to the